Hey, Bulldog X rays, Bulldog 62. There have been some threats. It's supposed to get up to 107. We have magazines loaded. Send your angels around to protect our flanks and our rears. F1, here we come. From Talil in southern Iraq. What's up, Texas? Northbound to Baghdad. This is the border up here. They travel. We've got a good convoy. The largest group of Texas Guardsmen ordered to war in over half a century. Bridge 16. 3,000 men and women who worked in schools, hospitals, offices, or other jobs one year ago. Whether or not it's a rocket. Now wear the Texas T patch on their arm. As an American soldier, you have it better than anybody in Iraq and carry the weight of worry and war on their shoulders. I didn't want to come. I, I don't really want to be here, but I'm going to do my job. Herbert King graduated from Dallas's Thomas Jefferson High School. Chris Waldrop has yet to see his newborn son. It is hard, um, but you just got to think of other people whenever you're, whenever before you think of yourself. And Chriselle McKenzie of Grand Prairie. She has a four-year-old she hesitates to call because it's too hard. I don't call him because I don't want to. I don't want him to say, Mommy, where are you? And I had to say, I'm over here. Over here includes a year and a half deployment for Texas Guardsmen. Mackenzie's job is to make sure her fellow soldiers get a chance to go home for a break. She'd like to get back to Grand Prairie by May 23rd, her son Jalen's birthday. It's just hard. I mean, he knows where I am in Iraq. He wants to know when am I coming home. I say for your birthday, I'll be there, but it's not always a guarantee. With children and families still sitting at home in Texas, many of these guardsmen here in Iraq simply tell us the truth. They did not expect to be here, and frankly, don't want to be here. Does every soldier want to be here? No, they don't want to be here. Um, not every one of the soldiers, but, but are they doing their job they're asked to do? Absolutely. That job for Texas Guardsmen may be one of the most dangerous in Iraq. The roadside bombs that kill and injure. Texas troops search the highways to find. At a mortar impact. Before the explosives trying to do find an intended target. It happens every day. Oh! They are the primary security force along main supply routes in southern Iraq, escorting the convoys of trucks that bring food and equipment. We're doing good over here. The good days have outnumbered the bad ones. We are a theater security brigade. And so we're doing that job. But more importantly than that is that there are 3,000 great Texans and Americans that are serving their country. Of course I didn't want to come because I didn't want to leave my son. Rochelle McKenzie is one of those 3,000. She visits Iraqi children at a nearby school and attempt to fill a void. It'll tug at your heartstrings. They're hungry, they have no shoes. And we have to be here to help them. On Wednesday, a Texas soldier's wish came true. The weight of worry for Chriselle McKenzie faded away. She is home with family. It's a blessing. <laughs> back with her baby for his birthday. How you been, mister? Before she heads back to Iraq yep. with her fellow yep. guardsmen. What are we going to do? Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News, Baghdad, Iraq. Secure that gunner. It's going along downtown Baghdad. Really downtown. looking for snipers on roofs. Make sure no one's going to fire a mortar or a rocket. Our threat level is going to go up. Every day, all day. The situation goes right now. The citizen soldiers of Texas. We're getting a mortar hit. Are on the hunt. We watch out for them. 18-year-old Jonathan Grant overlooks a hot zone of violence. We graduated October. I was home for about four months. Got married, and they shipped me off. They do have people that are watching us. Lieutenant Ben Garcia was working for a company in San Angelo. A year ago, surprised to be here. Captain. And on guard on the streets of Tikrit. Watch out, Barry. Two brothers from El Paso, Alejandro and Jesus Sainz. Actually, he's the one who got me into this mess. I joined the National Guard because uh, he was a member of it. They are four of the 3,000 Texas Guard members now assigned to military duty in Iraq. Full-time employees or students just a few months ago now trying to find the bombs that have become the weapon of choice in Iraq. Patrollers with the Texas National Guard search Iraq's explosives alley, the main highway between Kuwait and Baghdad. This is how we find some of the munitions that are out here. Just uh, talking with some of the local nationals. They guard five military camps strategically stationed throughout the country. And the main job, protect the convoys of trucks that provide supplies and equipment for the U.S. military. Lieutenant Garcia and the others know 
The patrols are risky and potentially deadly. The searches here are methodical, very slow. They have found bombs on these roads. They have to be extremely careful. If you look all the way down, you will see tank after tank, all of those men searching step by step for any explosives. It doesn't take long to find trouble. Kid flags us down and said that he, he, there's a shell down here. How far down is it? It turns out it is a 122 millimeter. After clearing the area, the bomb targeted toward Texas troops is eliminated by them. No deaths, no injuries. The Texas Combat Patrol is safe today. We're gonna come home. You know, it's up to the officers like myself to, to ensure that we do the, do the things we need to do to make sure that these guys come home. Last Wednesday morning, Lieutenant Ben Garcia came home and waiting for him, 21-day-old Abriana, his first grandchild. He heads back to Iraq with the Texas troops next week. Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News, Baghdad, Iraq. Driver, TC. They all wear the same uniform, all taking the same risks with their service in Iraq. 98% of the 3,000 members of the 56th Brigade Combat Team of the Texas National Guard are men. Got to try to keep your arms still. Or Michelle freak Thompson. Out. Does it hurt here? Is part of the other 2%. I volunteered, you volunteered to come here. I did. Thompson left her job. She was an emergency room nurse for Mesquite Community Hospital. I miss my job. I love my job. Are you able to bend this? She now puts her medical skills to work in a military camp just south of Baghdad. A lot of people, especially in the States, they haven't been over here and, and they think that war is about fighting and killing and really the soldiers provide so many things to the Iraqi people. The majority of the members of the 56 here were simple civilians just a short year ago. Business owners, nurses, school teachers. Many of them tell us, however, they're really concerned about having those jobs when they go home. They call me Mama Oates. Verna Oates worked for the Social Security Administration in Fort Worth. The mother of three is now a soldier's best friend, the mail delivery. The job back home may not be the biggest worry for her. I got mail. <laughs> That's because she is not the only member of her family mail when I go out the door. in Iraq. Her son serves as well. But she believes in the military mission she and her son work to fulfill. I see that we're helping them understand that they have other opportunities and can better themselves and further their lives. Verna Oates it pretty good. and Michelle Thompson right are just two okay. of the women from the Dallas-Fort Worth area spending the next year in Iraq. One heals the injuries of soldiers, the other offers a little motherly love and a little mail. Another happy soldier. <laughs> Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News, on Nasiriya, Iraq. The work for Texas Guardsmen in Iraq is focused and direct. Keep military camps clear from attack. Keep critical supply routes free from assault. There's also another job, and it takes Texans directly down the path into the world of Iraqis and Iraqi children. In the Daikar province of southern Iraq, in the village of Al Zebin, the members of the Texas force now part of Operation Iraqi Freedom are getting a lesson on life in school through the lives of Al Zebin village students. The conditions are cramped, like caves carved from clay. Sometimes there are snakes. It has been this way for hundreds of years. And, uh, I appreciate what you're doing. To build a relationship with the village. Yes, they are very happy, all of them. To achieve a military goal of changing hearts and minds. The 56th Brigade Combat Team of the Texas National Guard helped build a new school. It is a symbol of a new relationship between Iraqis free of Saddam Hussein's reign and the American forces who offer school backpacks but still carry weapons loaded with bullets. There may be dialogue and discussion here, but there still is danger. Even here inside the school, we're required to continue to wear our security helmets and our vest. The school is called Al Mashai, which in English means the torches of the future. Teacher Amar Hashim educates Iraq's future. Of course, they appreciate 
building a new school and they are very grateful to the American forces. The school may benefit the village, but it is also viewed as a critical component in the war. Providing the, the essential services for the community, especially a school for the primary age school children, is, uh, is a tremendous benefit to the people of Iraq and it helps our brigade's mission because it sustains support for the coalition forces. The school has also become a morale enhancer for the soldiers themselves. With Texas troops always on the lookout for mortar attacks and rocket assaults, getting hit with a smile from the children of Al Zebin is a mission many gladly accept. Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News, Dakar Province, Iraq. Black Hawk helicopter flight over Baghdad. Take CBS 11 photojournalist Edgar Solis and me to a different part of Iraq, a place with history and beauty, but still a place where Texas troops Monitor your area. must watch for bombs Had a mortar impact and battle. It is a place of poverty and despair until you see the banks of the Tigris River from the hillsides of luxury and opulence, a Shangri-La in Iraq. And on the inside, there's even more. In Tikrit, Iraq, just north of Baghdad, this is just one of the many homes of Saddam Hussein. Castles of marble, places of pleasure for Saddam, his sons, his loyalists. They are buildings controlled by the U.S. military now, or in the case of this mansion, they have been destroyed by U.S. bombs. What's up, Texas? Iraqi citizens who market their goods near the camps occupied by Texas troops of the 56th Brigade My God, the blast him every day. don't live in big homes and palaces, but they offer a clear vision of the Iraq they wish to have for the future. You ask me about Iraq, future Iraq, I think we go better. Just need time. Everything, everything you built new, need time. We know that the seed is uh, in the Arab ground now for, for the freedom for Iraq. But we need to cooperate with Americans to build Iraq completely. I'm telling Baghdad is out this direction. In Baghdad, 250 Texas troops surround a camp with these buildings as a backdrop. Saddam Hussein's victory over America Palace sits ironically unfinished. The other structures also damaged are now under U.S. control. And the men and women doing the work at these locations are Texans. I was back in Grand Prairie. Ariel Garcia works for the Grand Prairie Police Department. There's still a lot of bad stuff going on around here for us not to continue to come here. So uh, I knew it was my turn to come. Jerome Hawkins, a father of three from Arlington. Everybody here is uh, basically doing the best they can at, in the situations that they're given, the conditions they're given, and uh, just keep on praying for us, keep us in your prayers, you know, and. Um, and we'll be home here in about eight more months. 3,000 Texas National Guard members serving around the nation of Iraq, some near the majesty of Saddam's legacy, others near the villages of poverty. Steve Pickett, CBS 11 News, Baghdad, Iraq.